Oh, we live. I just had a cover on the on the screen. Uh, okay, uh, Jane has just put me live. So good day, everybody. We are in the Saab alone. You're in my office, and uh, uh, this is the first live for a while. Talking questions and answers on the GGR. It's a feature which. Uh, happens all through the race and uh, we uh, whenever you see the question mark you can stick your questions underneath in comments and we'll uh, get to answer them hopefully every week uh, we usually run the questions on the uh, answers uh, on a Saturday or over the weekend and uh, we've been really busy uh, one of the ironies is that uh, we have a bigger team but we're doing more so <laughs> so it's been crazy and I had hoped to do this uh, on Sunday at the latest but it didn't happen uh, we also know that there's a lot of people waiting for the uh, technical lives on the boats, okay, uh, with the entrant going through everything about their boat, why they're here, doing all that sort of stuff. We start that today, but we've got 16 entrants now, and uh, we can't get them all up uh, during the course of uh, this week. So some of it will be recorded, and we'll run them, you know, in the days as the event is happening. Uh, but we'll certainly be putting one up every day between now and the start. Uh, important thing, if you're just copying this, look at where the uh, uh, opportunities are to follow the race in different formats. You'll see on the top post now, it's pinned to the top, all the different social media we do. And if you're not on social media, you're not getting this and you're reading it from the website, you already know that you can cover that, uh, uh, you know, all the social media from the website. You don't have to be on Instagram or Twitter or whatever. It's actually there on the day by day page. So we'll look forward to that. Anyway, there's been a lot of stuff happening. I'm going to get straight into the questions. Um, I'm reading them straight off my computer, uh, and I'll uh, do them one at a, one at a time. Uh, first question was, have we got a date to start the GGR in 26? We don't have the day, but we certainly know it'll be a similar time period. So it'll be uh, beginning of September somewhere. We, we feel very confident that'll actually work out well in uh, in terms of weather in the Southern Ocean, and it fits well in Saab Delone here, if, if we're here next year, or, uh, in the next edition, uh, and I'm hoping we are. So, uh, so yeah, sometime September, uh, early September 2026. Next one, that was from Bruno. Next one from Lucy. What time does the race start, and from what time do the boats and skippers go into the channel? The race start local time will be 4 o'clock in the afternoon, uh, the boats are actually leaving here uh, just before 2 o'clock, so it's about 1.45. Uh, they'll be heading down the river, so if you're on the wall, it's going to be quite exciting. And It'll all be covered live on Facebook. We have two feeds happening on Facebook. One will be in French and one will be in English. They'll be posted one above the other, uh, as well as being on the water doing random lives in bits and pieces. So there's one overall coverage and we look forward to uh, that day. Although the weather's not looking good at the moment, there's no wind, but we've got a week to go, so it'll change. Um, okay, next question. Pat Lawless and Guy de Boer have not submitted their celestial navigation logs during their 2000 mile qualifier. They've been fined and must now do 300 mile solo voyage and submit a minimum of three Celestial navigation uh, calculations. Uh, why were these entrants not informed sooner? It seems unfair and petty uh, to also find them 1,500 euro. There's a couple of, couple of issues there. The first one is they could have submitted, uh, Pat could have submitted his uh, celestial logs over two years ago and didn't do that. Uh, Guy has just completed 4,000 miles across the Atlantic a month ago uh, and could again submit those at any time he, he wants. Uh, there is a, a date requirement to finish uh, in the notice of race, a date requirement to finish your uh, qualifying voyage and get your registration in. Now the key to all of the compliance issues is your final registration. It's very clear in the notice of race what you have to do and, and uh, what happens if you don't. The reality is if you don't on time, it's fines up to $10,000, okay? And uh, if you haven't uh, finished your qualifier, we extend that beyond the registration time up until the 1st of August, okay? And then after that, uh, when it's completed, you then need to put your logs in. Uh, it's only uh, from the uh, prologue in Gijon that all the entrants come together and most of them give us those that data from there because there's charts and books and this and the other and we don't want them to necessarily bring them in the mail and all those sorts of things. So that request was put in on the 9th of August and both Pat and Guy did not submit them at that time. Uh, more or less delayed and delayed, even though we were requesting, we were requesting and requesting. Uh, they were avoiding the issue, and it wasn't until we actually officially uh, put them on notice that they may be fined and, and have a penalty that, that data was finally submitted, 
and that data was proven to be completely unsatisfactory and, and basically completely missing. So uh, it's a very serious offence. All entrants have to be able to navigate and prove they can navigate. Uh, they made no effort to do that. And so uh, serious ramifications come from it. And uh, the fine was uh, uh, considered to be uh, as lenient as we could and yet emphasising the importance of those fines. There's another question further on, why do we find entrants? Well, the first thing you have to know is that when an entrant enters the GGR, when they put in their application, they have to sign a declaration and it specifically mentions in that declaration that they've read the notice of race, they are aware of the fines, and if they breach any of the rules, they are prepared to pay those fines, okay? They sign off on that, so they know what the ramifications are. Why do we have fines? There are so many aspects to this race that involve government departments, uh, uh, so much official paperwork, media obligations, just simple things like taking photos of their boat, sailing, and if we don't get them, we can't give you the experience that you're hoping to get with the event, and yet entrants simply do not do it. Not all of them, but a huge majority of them, for instance, on media, uh, they say they're too busy, they don't want to do it, and uh, we have to have some form of penalty. We could find entrants, I'd say, across the board regularly. We don't do it. It takes a lot of warnings, uh, a lot of prompting. We go for years overdue when the fines are due because we hate finding entrants, okay? You've got to understand that. It's not easy. We give them an opportunity to appeal that, that fine, uh, and it's up to them whether they do or they don't. Sometimes there's mitigating circumstances. Uh, some entrants have had fines that have then immediately been suspended, subject to not receiving another fine. But there are, there's serious business in the GGR. It's not just media, it's not just parties. We have obligations all over the place, and uh, uh, that's all you can do. But believe me, uh, we are very lenient, extremely lenient on when uh, and how we place our fines. So, uh, and if you want to read about it, it's all available in the Notice of Race. I mean, you're here to enjoy the race. You don't need to read the Notice of Race. But if you want any answers, have a look at the Notice of Race, and you might be surprised at what you find there. So, uh, uh, But we hate delivering fines, that's the bottom line, but we have to sometimes. Uh, okay, uh, that's the next question. Why are, from uh, Doncha, why are, are we finding entrance and uh, we hate it, but we just got to do it sometimes and we're not, we, we're not ashamed of doing it, believe me, that might explain it. Um, you know, we have to sometimes. Uh, I'm leading a vo reading The Voyage of Madman, which is an amazing book, um, and uh, uh, after suggestions of other reads, which has uh, been replied to underneath that comment. Uh, next one from Susan. Do you get advice on how much and what food to take? Uh, or do we give advice? No, we don't. Everyone tackles it in a different way. We've all got our own experiences. I'll talk about my experiences later on in that during the course of the commentary of the race. Um, but yeah, it's a fascinating thing. And we're asking all entrants to provide answers to a substantial questionnaire. So we'll have a lot of answers on things like even how many pairs of underwear they're taking, how many rolls of toilet paper, quite true, because uh, there's a lot of fascinating things that going on within within their own sort of uh, efforts to, to be involved with the GDR, and we're capturing all that so we can tell you all about it as we go forward. So, so yeah, there's, there's going to be some interesting information, but food, it's up to them. Some take wet food, some take freeze-dried, some take, uh, you know, all sorts of bits and pieces, so uh, pre-cooked in jars and so on. So we'll uh, cover that more as we get into the race. Uh, Jojo has got, how about a session on the steps take to take uh, to race in the GGR in 2026? As you may know, there's a lot of 2022 entrants that haven't quite made this addition for various reasons. COVID was one of those, you know, people, the entrants couldn't travel to their boats. It was upsetting their work, sort of ability to earn money and find sponsors and so on. So uh, a lot of those are now lining up for 26. We've got a big potential entry list uh, already. Other new entrants are out buying boats. We're discussing with them the entry uh, forms and uh, opportunity to sign up will happen in uh, late August, uh, late October rather. Uh, and it's a complicated scenario on how you get into the GGR, but quite simply, there's no need to have any instruction at this point. You either want to do it or you don't. You know, people ask, how do you win the GGR? How do you finish in the GGR? It's all here in your head. So if you're losing sleep at night and want to know whether you should or shouldn't do the GGR, you're so passionate and build up about it, you'll make that decision and then you'll sort it out and we're available to talk and so on. So uh, whether we do a session on how you do it and how you get sponsorship and stuff, we'll talk about it during the commentary of the race. Huge subject, but um, 
Uh, we will bring it up along the way, but it's, we can't talk about it here now. Um, this takes too long. Uh, Francois, New Year's Eve. Uh, is there a French version of the GGR Facebook page? Because my English is too bad. Now, we've pondered this. We've worked on it in so many different ways. And in the end, we concluded it's very difficult. Because if we put a French and an English post up, the majority of people should be translating automatically. And then you end up with two French or two English. My Facebook is the same as everyone else's Facebook. You can set up to do auto-translate on every post. So I follow all the French posts on Vendée Globe race, uh, on the Mini Transat race out of here, and it comes on my screen in complete English. It's, it's like a, an auto Google Translate, but it's pretty good. You know what's going on. And uh, so we're hoping that, that uh, all the other French followers for now are using that auto translate and can clearly understand and see what's happening. So it is very confusing trying to run two uh, Facebook feeds on that. Certainly at the start, we'll have a French and English live uh, commentary. Um, okay, I uh, wish to know the process of, of fixing uh, Abolish Tommy's boat in the bow section. Now, we're too busy to go over there and flow, follow everything blow by blow, but certainly Tommy and his team, or uh, Abolish and his team, uh, are doing just that. Uh, if you get on and like his page, they're busy also at the moment, but certainly as once they get in the water, you'll see a lot of explanation on the technical side of how they did it. It's, it's being led by Dick Koopmans, who was Mark Slat's previous uh, manager, you know, very talented yacht designer, builder, the whole lot. Uh, we're confident that the fix will be really efficient and safe. And so, uh, but, you know, you just keep an eye on, on his page, you know, like that and, and uh, you'll get it. We'll obviously share some bits later on just to show uh, what happens, but uh, that's the best place to get that information. Same with all the other entrants. Look at their Facebook feeds, it's quite fun. Uh, Michael, how can we get a poster of the 22 GGR here uh, in the UK? Uh, come over and visit the village, they're free. <laughs> but it's really challenging for us. We will have the shop up and functioning once the race starts. We're all too busy to, to, to manage that right now. Uh, and there will be an opportunity to buy a poster and have it in the mail. We've got poster tubes and so on. There's various posters you'll see. The, the posters themselves are free, but the handling and getting them out, it, 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 it takes a bit of an effort. So uh, follow that. When you see the shop come up, you can um, uh, get that organised. Most of our merchandise, we thought we'd support Poland because, the, because of the war over in Ukraine and so on. So rather than getting our merchandise from normal suppliers, we've got them from a supplier in Poland, and it's a complete muck up. Uh, with all of our stock was supposed to be here two weeks before the start of the race. I, I think it's leaving Poland today and may get to us at the end of the week, a day or two before the start. So it's very disappointing for us. We've been let down badly by that, but uh, we still support Poland. Um, anyway, uh, so uh, moving along. Uh, Jay says, is rowing allowed during the race? Yes, it is, but it'd be hard to row around the world, but certainly Mark Slats had some big oars there. He's a world champion rower in long distance rower, and it, it's, it's allowed, but it's a long way. So uh, you can also motor as well. In the past edition, in 18, a lot of the entrants were motoring uh, to use up the fuel they carried. In this edition, you can't do that. Uh, you get a two hour time penalty for every litre you use over 25 litres. We give them 25 litres to keep their engine serviced. During the year, they can run it for half an hour every so often. Uh, but after that, that's it, it's a two hour time penalty. So all of the finishing times will be provisional once they cross the finish line. We bring them to the fuel dock, fill them up, and every litre over 25 litres, they get that penalty. So it's gonna be quite interesting. It encourages solar power, wind generators, uh, hydro generators, and so on. Uh, Mike Phillips, uh, can you please comment on GGR position regarding the international coal regs, in particular reference to uh, Abolish Tommy's incident uh, on the race in Dijon? Now, the bottom line is the uh, uh, GGR is a solo race around the world, as is the Vendée Globe, as is the transatlantic races and so on. If I start to discuss the, the subject of solo sailing in relation to maintaining a proper watch, it's incredibly fascinating. It's extremely, uh, not controversial, but everyone's got an opinion, and we'd be here for days, okay? Uh, but you have to look at the fact that it's extremely rare that anyone ever gets prosecuted for uh, solo sailing, uh, because you can maintain a watch to the best of your ability, which is part of the coal regs. Uh, there's many international commercial ships that are faced with the same problems to meet the definition of the coal regs, you are supposed to listen with your ears. It's specifically mentioned in the coal regs. When you're standing watching the bridge of a ship, and I've done plenty of that, you cannot hear, okay? So technically, you're in breach of 
uh, in the opinion of some people, in breach of the coal regs. Okay, but you've also got to be aware of what the definition is of to the best of your ability. So it's a very complicated scenario. In relation to Abolish's incident, uh, you can rest assured the ship is in a process now, which happens for all shipping. Uh, he's had an incident, a collision he's been made aware of. He will have to immediately report that to uh, various uh, international authorities, including the ship owner. They have to put in reports. The state uh, or the country that the ship's registered under gets a report. They delegate investigators to get onto the bridge at the next port of call to get copies of the logs, listen to the black box data recordings of voice conversations in the bridge. It's, a mass, it's quite a strong investigation because they're not meant to have collisions. So in Tommy's case, I'm reasonably confident he will also get interviewed eventually uh, to get his side of the story. And it's all about making sure it doesn't happen again, that they might discover something that everyone can um, absorb and change their methods if the ship is found to be deficient in operating its ship safety management system. So in other words, if the officer of the watch wasn't doing something he was supposed to, uh, he might be in trouble or whatever. There's a lot of things that, that, that can happen and uh, fortunately no one was injured. It was just collateral damage and, uh, you know, but I'm, I'm certain there will be an investigation. Um, certainly Tommy has already speak, spoken about it a bit already um, and, uh, you know, it'll be, uh, if there's an official report, we'll certainly publish it. Uh, on GGR Media. Um, okay, will the Saab de loan, uh, will I will be in the Saab de loan on 2nd to the 24th of September. Will, what will be the programming for those days? If you check out the events section of the GGR website, there is a massive amount of information there detailing everything that's happening in the village here. If you look on the social media feeds, you'll see a day by day account of what's coming up, you know, on that next day if you want to visit. So uh, follow the first lead from the website. Um, basically, uh, the marina is closed to the public on, on start day. You need special passes. Uh, uh, there'll be a lot of emotion as they set out. It'll be covered on Facebook uh, uh, lives. And then uh, there's a procession of boats down the, the river and the boats get out there. And again, it, it, it's live. We actually have a zero carbon footprint helicopter uh, covering the start as well as drones and four or five cameras on the water. It'll be quite an interesting start. And I was fascinated because I said, we, do we really want a helicopter? No, but they actually found one that the company is uh, zero foot, carbon footprint, they, uh, uh, which was interesting. So, okay, let's do it. And Lasab Delone have been great with that. You've got no idea. The, the effort that Lasab Delone are putting in to cover the start and everything here with the village is just massive, phenomenal, and incredibly exciting. So, um, yeah, they're a very strong partner and uh, they're in it with us big time. So thanks for that. Um, where is Susan? We miss her. I think you're talking about Susie Goodall. Uh, Susie Goodall's a mother. Uh, she uh, had a family after the end of the race. Uh, she's not coming over to the start. Some of the 2018 entrants are, but uh, Susie won't be here. But you might find something on Facebook. Um, uh, thanks, Cyril, for your best wishes. Uh, Hans says, hi. Uh, I've read that two sailors haven't passed the security checking. The use of a sextant will not be allowed to cross the start line. May I know which sailors they were? Well, that's all been discussed before. Uh, they've just, I think Pat is already back from his 300 mile uh, voyage and uh, Guy will come back later today for a briefing. Okay, we're in the office. Ada's over there and Jane's in the corner as well. So, uh, um, so it's all good here. Um, love to know more for J Judd Berry. I'd love to learn more about drogue choices for the races. Who has a Jordan series drogue and who doesn't? And for those who don't, what's their serious heavy weather gear and warps? I've got to mention Katie Strickland at uh, Yachting Monthly, who did a really interesting series of articles, which would still be online, okay? And she asked those specific questions for every entrant. As I said, we've got a questionnaire going to all the entrants. We'll have all this data on everything, you know, the type of sex that they're using, you know, what type of towing log they're using, what type of drogues they've got, uh, all this sort of stuff. And I can give you all the data then. Quite a few have got series drogue style units. And we'll talk about the techniques and opinions on how heavy weather should come. But, but now it's really difficult to get into a lengthy discussion on that. But it's a big subject. So uh, keep watching and you'll, you'll, you'll get all those answers for sure. Um, uh, and Thimos would like to know, um, uh, uh, will there be any experiments and scientific work from sailors? Some of the sailors are doing experimental work. As an organiser, we haven't been involved with uh, coordinating one across the fleet. We simply don't have the resources to manage that at the moment. If we had big partners, we could do all sorts of things, right? But we don't have that. Um, so as an example, uh, Bayant, which is the, the sponsor of uh, Abolish Tommy, 
uh, they've got one, a lot of things, a few things happening, but the most fascinating one is that he has a, a special colour patch on the deck of the boat that will be uh, tracked, the boat will be tracked by satellite. They'll take satellite imaging of that colour patch on the deck of the boat. And from that, they colour correct the camera and the, all the water around for a couple of kilometres all the way around, from that colour match, they can determine a huge amount of data on what's going in the, on in the ocean in that particular area. So uh, it, it's a very involved project, super high tech, part of the Bayant sort of process of being a, a, um, an organisation that collects uh, data. They collect data about all sorts of things, the environment, business, uh, you know, strategic issues and so on. And then they analyse that and they use that data for various projects. You know, it's quite a fascinating thing. So again, get onto the individual entrance uh, Facebook page or their websites and you'll see exactly what they're doing, but some are. Um, Stephen Eddy, which vein uh, is the most used this year? Well, without question, it's the, it's just the uh, hydro vein. Um, it's got some unique advantages. One of the big ones is that a lot of these full kill boats, some like the Rustler have their rudder right at the back, but others like Tapio and uh, uh, who else? Um, even the Tradewind 35, their rudders are quite a long way forward. They're not far back from the center line of the boat. So the rudders themselves then can be on an angle as well, which makes them inefficient when they're turning. If it's a vertical rudder post, they're a lot more hydrodynamically efficient. And because they're further forward and not right at the back of the boat, they're not as efficient. So if you're using a, a wind vane like an Aries or something, nothing wrong with Aries, you know, they're, they're quite a nice vane. Uh, using a servo pendulum system, pulling ropes to use your own ship's rudder, you're still steering the boat from the rudder, which is way forward. A hydro vane has a, an independent steering rudder right at the back of the boat and it has the potential to steer a straighter course. So if you're doing less of this and more of that, you obviously go further distance, and that's exactly what's happened to Tapio. That's why he swapped from um, the wind pilot. One of the reasons he swapped from the wind pilot to a hydro vane this time, because he knows that being right at the back of the rudder, rather than using his little rudder way forward, he's likely to go straighter, which could save him a week or a week and a half. So, uh, uh, so yeah, but there's a few different vanes. There's monitors, there's a wind pilot, there's uh, uh, Hydrovane, and I think that might be all. Uh, uh, um, uh, Gurev had a, a, a um, Cape Horn vein, but he unfortunately had to retire. So, uh, so there's a few different things. So watch this space, and it, it'll be a lot of fun. You know, seeing what happens to equipment and so on is a big part. So I've quickly gone through all of those questions. And as I say, keep an eye out to, uh, to that. When you see the question mark, give us your questions and we'll answer them honestly and brutally and we'll uh, also give you a simple conversation about what's happening uh, uh, you know, at the time in the race. There's a lot of other things going on with the daily tracker update. Uh, you'll know if you followed the last race, it's every day, but we don't start that up straight away because there's not a lot happening when they get out of here heading towards Lanzarote. So we'll get into that process between here and Lanzarote. You'll see them come up. We'll give you a tutorial on how to use the, the tracker and so on because uh, there's lots of features. You can actually get onto the tracker now and just play with those features, how to bring the wind up, how to measure distance, uh, how to zoom uh, in and out, uh, you know, there's a lot of stuff you can play with there. So if you do that now, you can you can get a head start for when they're actually out there. Um, if you're using the the uh, you know a a laptop, that's you get a lot more, you get a bit more information on a laptop than you do if you download the app to use your mobile device. Mobile device is really good; you can check in a few times a day. But if you want all the data, it's it's really on the PC that you're going to get more features there. Better wind as well on the on the um, on your mobile device, you'll get uh, Predict Wind, which is a series of little arrows because you can't handle the, 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 the software in your phone as easy as you can in the PC. On a PC, you get the windy weather, which is far more detailed, and that's why we can give a better explanation about what's going to happen you know, in the, in the days ahead for each of the entrants and so on. So anyway, it will be starting that up slowly once we get going. So for now, that's it. I'm going to sign off uh, if Jane comes over and presses the button. Jane, Jane. Uh, and we'll, we'll see you again. Uh, keep an eye out for the lives on the uh, entrant boats. Uh, there'll be at least one coming up a day, and then we'll do the others after the event. A uh, lot of things going on in the village if you're around. Check it out. So thank you for that, and uh, thanks for the team and everyone that's working this one. We'll, we'll do a group shot of the whole team maybe today, and you'll see there's a lot of people involved now. A huge amount of volunteers even in the, in the office here. So thanks. See ya.